Jake, joining me right now for more analysis, Democratic strategist and senior director of research at Bustle.com, Jessica Tarlov, and Republican strategist, Evan Siegfried. He's the author of GOP GPS. Good to see both you guys. Hey, All right. He covered a lot of ground there. Uh, it, it felt in some ways almost like one of his campaign speeches. He made a lot of promises in terms of what wa he wants to get done. Evan, how much of this do you think is indeed realistic? How much will he get accomplished in his first year? Well, I think he's already putting points on the board, but he's doing them through executive action. And what he needs to do is do that with Congress, and that would actually help uh, energize Republicans who are, might not be as in favor of him, but are in favor of their elected representatives, that they go out and they toil and work hard to get them elected. Mm -hmm. I think he's in a good position because of the having both chambers of uh, Congress. And he also is actually flexing some muscle by talking to the conservative grassroots activists. They are the very ones that he will need in order to pass his agenda. They're going to be the people pushing the public and pushing back against the uptick on the left in enthusiasm. Okay. Um, you know, you think about yourself, for example, Evan, and you're a conservative. You're someone who was not very excited about Donald Trump uh, <laughs> at all. Um, in fact, initially, you may have disliked him as much as Jessica does. But you've come <laughs> around. No, no, no. You've come, <laughs> but you've come, but, but, come over to you in a minute, Jessica. But you come around, Evan. Um, and, and how is that? How did that come to be? In other words, what did what happened with you that you said, OK, this is my president and I want these policies to succeed. And how does that happen with the rest of the Republican Party? And I'm thinking about John Kasich, for example, who's there at the White House today. Well, I didn't fall and hit my head. At, there's a time for campaigning and the time for campaigning ended after the election ended. After that, whether or not we like the result, we all have to come together as Americans and support the president of the United States. It's not saying not my president. We didn't mm -hmm. do that with Barack Obama because the president's success is America's success. And I think other Republicans see that as well. And we can band together and achieve results. OK, together. but then this means also bringing Congress along as he tries to get his agenda through. Uh, and Jessica, look, there's political hurdles to anything. I mean, this is a man who comes from a business background. He's run his own company. So. You know, part of running your own company means you get to tell people what to do. And there's right. not necessarily the back and forth that happens on the political front. So, it, you know, he's, he's hit a few speed bumps along the way. But let's not forget, this is why Americans put him in that office to begin with. They want someone who's used to calling the shots and getting stuff done. How does he negotiate his big businessman personality with the realities of Washington, D.C.? Well, I think it's going to be a difficult path for him. I think that Congress obviously has more familiarity with this process, as most of them have been there before, and they know what it takes for all three branches of government actually to work together to accomplish anything. You know, I think that he has, by and large, been inching towards getting better. Obviously, the Trump bravado is never going to go away, but I think mm -hmm. that as he continues to hit some of these roadblocks that Evan mentioned, have to do with there being co-equal branches of government, he's going to start to, to realize more and more that even though he's never had a boss before, he now has about 320 million of them. Well, and uh, they all you know, have look, he, he, the one thing I would say he's got going for him, though, is that he's got Americans on his side in a way that, you know, he may not have every member of Congress on his side. He may not yeah. have every member of the Senate, but he's got a lot of Americans on his side. Let me share with you uh, part of his rhetoric about putting the country first. Uh, he's saying he's never going to apologize for protecting the safety of American people. Let's watch. I will never, ever apologize for protecting the safety and security of the American people. I won't do it. If it means I get bad press, if it means people speak badly of me, it's okay. It doesn't bother me. The security of our people is number one is number one. You see, I think that resonates in America right now. I think people have felt very unsafe, you know, from both an economic standpoint and an actual security standpoint. And Evan, isn't the number one job of our country, of our president, to in fact keep us safe? I mean, this is sort of one of those basics that goes along uh, with, with who we are as Americans. We anticipate and expect our government to keep us safe. And so even though the left throws a fit with some of his rhetoric and some of the things he's proposed, in other words, his intentions are right. And his intentions may be very much in line with your average American's thinking. Yeah, I think the left needs to realize 
that Donald Trump doesn't wake up in the morning and think, how can I harm the United States? He thinks, how can I keep it safe? And whether you agree with the method in which he does it is one thing. But to go out and protest left and right saying that this is anarchy and it should be impeachable is utter nonsense. Donald well, Trump is in charge of keeping, he is commander in chief and he is in charge of protecting the homeland from terrorists as well as to keep us economically viable and inspire economic confidence in the American people. All right, you guys, I'm going to yeah. see you in a little bit. We'll continue okay. the conversation. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, there you have it. You've seen John Kasich, governor of Ohio, walking into the White House just moments ago. Right now, as we speak, he is sitting down with the president of the United States, a man who he's had a little bit of a rocky past with. Don't forget, remember when the Republican convention happened? John Kasich was in his home state. He didn't even go. Uh, so perhaps this is an opportunity right now for them to mend some bridges. Uh, I, I'm back with Jessica Tarlov and Ed and Siegfried. And, uh, you know, Jessica, it, it's kind of important, right, that the yeah. Republicans stick together. I mean, they they need every vote they can get. And we've seen that, that some have, have drifted off. I mean, you think about Senator Collins in Maine. You think about uh, the senator from Alaska, uh, mm -hmm. Betsy DeVos, was someone that neither one of them were too happy about. They drifted right. off. To, if, if you run this risk where you, you get a few stragglers here and there along the way, it makes it much harder to get your agenda through, right? Absolutely. So I mean, what role can John Kasich play in bringing people back together? Well, I think that what John Kasich can do is much of what he's done all along, which is to be a voice of moderation within the Republican Party. Now, to a liberal, his agenda is still quite extreme, especially on women's issues. Um, but John Kasich knows how to talk the talk and walk the walk. He balanced budgets in Ohio. He works with Democrats um, and is liked on both sides of the aisle. I know a lot of Democrats who said we would have been okay if he had been president. So I think that what he needs to do is explain to Donald Trump that, for instance, when you have GOP congressmen and women coming out of Texas saying, that the border wall is not the best way to secure the border, listen to them. When you have Susan Collins say, I will not vote for an Obamacare repeal if it means defunding Planned Parenthood, listen to her. I mean, um, he is now in, in charge. I, I, think, I think that the ship has sailed on, on the wall, though. I mean, we, we did hear him reiterate that he once says again it every today. Day, though, and but that, fact that the wall's happening. Yeah, so, but he, he, he needs to do that. every day that aren't happening. He needs to do it for his base. I mean, if, if, he needs to if do that for doesn't get ego. built, or if no one even tries to build that, then he runs the risk of looking like it was a whole bunch of empty promises. And but perhaps that's a there's nothing problem. more symbolic than that wall, something he's talked about from the very beginning <laughs> and has been, you know, such a lightning rod. But, you know, Evan, back to the, the idea of John Kasich coming into the fold potentially now. Um, you know, Donald Trump... He, he's not everyone's taste. Let me, let, let, me, <laughs> let me say it that way. I mean, I, I think that he speaks um, very much from the heart. Uh, and what you see is what you get. And that's, in effect, essentially his re appeal, right? That's, that's why a lot of Americans say, yes, you know, I love him because of this what you see is what you get attitude. But that's not necessarily John Kasich's style. And so when I say he's not everyone's taste or cup of tea, I'm including John Kasich in that bunch. How does Kasich get his head around the fact that this is a man who's going to say exactly what he thinks and feels, even if it's not necessarily what everyone wants to hear? Well, as John Kasich described himself, he's like a store brand version of Diet Cola. Yeah. So it's going to make it a little bit tough. But I think that with be it John Kasich or any other Republican who might not be in lockstep with the president, they should find areas of mutual overlap and agreement. In Ohio, there's a massive heroin epidemic, and President yeah. Trump has talked about decreasing heroin deaths. So I think that's a great place for the two of them to start and really come together. They might not agree on every issue, but you can do it there. Oh, that's uh, President Trump needs to work with congressional Republicans in getting laws established because then they will be much more on his side when he's putting points on the board with them. Everybody mm -hmm. likes to be on a winning team as long as they're participating. Yeah, except for the Democrats. <laughs> so we no, say, we right? Like except for the Democrats. No, but You've you know, right now there's lately. there's there's an opportunity to try and get stuff done. But do you think, Jessica, and, and, and take the politics out of it for a moment, or, or sort of your own personal politics, and just look at it objectively? I mean, do you think that their rationale is we can't allow anything to get done that's, per, that's seen or perceived as successful because any success he has is our loss? In other words, they're looking at this as one big zero-sum game? 
I think that there are some Democrats who do feel that way. I happen to think, though, that Chuck Schumer is not one of them. Chuck Schumer has spoken about the opportunities to work together on infrastructure. Donald Trump wants a you know a trillion dollar spending bill for that. You know, sure, we'll be right there spending with you. I think that there are ways to uh, repair Obamacare that we can do together. I think the Democrats need to budge a little on being able to purchase insurance across state lines and make sure that obviously we can keep pre-existing conditions and that kids can stay on their insurance until they're 26. And Americans now. Uh, have a quite a favorable view of Obamacare. Yeah. So and, that's somewhere where we can meet. And, and, and let's not forget in all of this, I think Americans' frustration has not been with necessarily either party. I mean, right? It, it, Donald it's just Trump. Washington. It, it, in many ways, as you mentioned, the infrastructure spend, that's something that could be seen as very much a Democratic principle, totally. a, a principle of the Democratic Party. And so it, it's not a partisan country so much as it is a country that is really fed up with politicians not wanting to get anything done. And I think that's where the Democrats are coming up short. If they continue this message of we don't want to play ball, we're going to take our ball and go home, then they're going to continue to run into trouble. Jessica, Evan, good to see you guys. Thanks. Thank Have you so weekend. much. You too.